Hey, praise God. Hey, welcome to the podcast. And today at Parental Guidance, I have with me wonderful, a beautiful young lady named Yolanda Skull. And she's working on a PhD in terms of uh, behavioral science and uh, and psychology, community counseling, okay, and uh, ontology. Oh wow, <laughs> and everything else. And so we are going to talk about some things that uh, could be a, a major issue. Uh, and she's going to talk from a medical and spiritual uh, viewpoint because I deal with both as well. My degree is not in uh, uh, psychology, but I do have. Some classes in social psychology. <laughs> I was just telling my wife I need to go back. I would like to go back and finish to get that degree in social psychology because I started off with psychology, I mean, so uh, uh, sociology, but I ended up going, changing it to social psychology. Loved the class, loved the classes. Uh, just went a different direction and finished and got my uh, doctor of ministry in religious studies. So, but still, nevertheless, <laughs> I have a ton of information concerning uh, your field as well as mm -hmm. what I do. And I do believe that there is a, a combination of both the spiritual and the in the mental aspect yes, and uh, you are one of the you are the counselor here at the joy center which deals with uh inside we call it inside out yes, sir. uh give us give me some information why do you call it inside out because you thought of the name it really comes from <clears throat> the fact that we get so caught up in like the exterior things that go on around us that we don't realize that the things begin within us and it generally starts with the things that we thought we think about or the things that we kind of fester upon that are within us so if we can begin to look at the spirit man and look at the heart and what's going in, going on inside then it's going to change everything that's going on on the outside because our perspective changes we look at everything differently and we realize that usually we're the reason that issues continue in our lives and the answers that we need are within us Absolutely. we already have the answers Absolutely. And you, I'm sure you find that, uh, especially when counseling, and you do it for the military as well, yes, sir. that it's hard for them to somehow think of that being a possibility. And why would that be? I think that people have just become so inundated with all the stuff that's going on around them. And I actually read something that what just really stuck out to me, and it said that People get so caught up in all the things that are around them all the time that they've made those problems so much bigger than they made God. Mm. And because they look at the problems as so big, they don't even look to him as being the answer or that the answers are going to come from him. So they just think that everything that's around them is much greater than the God that's within them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know you have questions for me, too. And uh, I'm just asking you some questions yes, concerning... Sir. Uh, the field you're in and how you have been such an asset to this ministry. And I could say that with all my heart. She has been a great asset and taken a lot of weight off of me personally. And uh, the, the people that go to Inside Out, I've heard nothing but rave reviews. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's a blessing because Thanks, normally they cuss you to your face and say, <laughs> I'll never go back to see that woman. We've heard some of that too and then they come oh. back. <laughs> A little bit of all of it, but it's okay. <laughs> and I'm sure in the military you get that a mm. heck of a lot. Oh, yes, uh, sir. I've been fired and hired more times yeah. than I can even count. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, you, you just have to take it with a grain of salt. You can't take things personally. Right, right. People are going through some things, some mental issues. They are. I don't, I don't believe that, first of all, the secular education part doesn't deal with the spiritual as much as, even though they, they deal with a little bit, but the spiritual as much as I, I know that they should. Right. Um, another, another thing that uh, I think about, because most of them don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, right. so they cannot relate to the spiritual side. Yes. Everything is based on pharmaceutical solutions, uh, instead of prayer, mm -hmm. uh, 
And so, I mean, how do you deal with that? Uh, I mean, we, I know, the, the, oh God, for the, <laughs> for the number of years, uh, because one of my, my emphasis in my degree is also in counseling. So in counseling, uh, you know, I have dealt with every imaginable issue, mm -hmm. even murder, uh, and some that was considered manslaughter uh, and uh, involuntary manslaughter. Mm -hmm. And so uh, yeah, I got man, man I, I, I should be losing my mind if that's the case. <laughs> <laughs> All the things that I've gone through and been through in my ministry is, I used to think is, am I the only one going through this? Because other pastors, I could talk with them, they've never touched the issue. Mm -hmm. They've never dealt with certain things. And, uh, but I believe in deliverance. Now, I don't believe in a deliverance ministry per se as being separate. Mm -hmm. I think it's all con inconclusive uh, where God just gives us the ability to pray and get people delivered if they want to be delivered. Yes, you know, he yes. tells us in his word that I've given you authority and power over all serpents uh, and scorpions and and by no means shall anything hurt you or harm you. So I believe in that. What, what do you believe? I believe the same. <laughs> I definitely believe the same thing. Um, one of the things that... Um, if it's okay to say this, I, I think that people need to understand that there's a difference in having a counselor who is a Christian and a counselor who provides Christian counseling. Um, what would you be considered? I am a counselor who is a Christian. Everything that I do is, is through a Christian worldview. Praise God. Um, even if someone is in front of me and that's not necessarily their beliefs, the truth that comes from all the theories that we use are based in the Word. They've just been you know, tainted or changed yes. here and there, but all of those things can be um, referred back to the word. So if it's not something I can filter through God's word, I don't, I don't use it. I don't use everything that we learned in school. Yeah. I learned it because we have to learn it. Right. But after that, I can choose what I use. And if I can't filter it through the word, I don't use it at all. Praise God. But there are very, very few Christian mm -hmm. counselors, especially in El Paso, but, but just overall, mm. um, they will tell you that they're Christian counselors because they will incorporate Christianity if you want them to. Mm. But that doesn't mean that they are Christian themselves or that they really understand, you know, what we believe and where we actually come from. Mm -hmm. So if, if it's a Christian worldview, even if they're not coming to me and, and stating that that's what they want, mm -hmm. um, the revelation that I receive comes from my relationship with God. So, you know, even so the Holy Spirit is just giving you information on how to minister to them. Sometimes it blows my mind what mm, comes out I of my believe mouth, that. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> you know, because it's not anything that I would know any other way. Mm -hmm. And there have even been times where um, God has allowed me to feel what someone feels or to experience the symptoms that they are experiencing. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But it helps me to help them understand what's going on because a lot of times people don't have the words yes. for what they feel or what they're, what's going on. And, and if it's something that he's allowed me to feel to some degree, then I can ask certain questions that will help draw out of them what I need to be able to guide them. Yeah. You know, you're mentioning several gifts, which is key in reference to ministering to others or counseling others, whatever you want to call it. And it's called the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge. Those two major uh, gifts of the spirit better uh, equips you as a person because it gives you insight, uh, like you're mentioning, and the spirit of God just opens you up to things and their world because you see it in the Bible where Jesus is dealing with people all the time. And people don't realize that uh, the foundation of every single disorder comes out of a mental disorder based on spiritual principles. Yes, sir. That's the thing. And uh, those disorders, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, from narcissism, uh, could be some of the other ones, depression, oh, schizophrenia, schizoph anxiety. Um, oh my goodness, there's so, so many. Yeah, it's, so many. And man has named and give, come, in, come up with so many names. Mm -hmm. 
And those names are, to me, just a way to say, this is how we identify you. Right. Uh, but here's the key. Here's where the peace of God comes in, uh, Yolanda. The Lord says in his word, if you keep your mind, this right here, not this, mm -hmm. your mind stayed on me, I will keep you in perfect peace. Now, it may be better, uh, uh, easier said than done, but still the fact remains. The foundation of it is the disorder comes as a result of, the, uh, of a, uh, how can I say it, a dismissal of the Word of God or uh, you're in relationship with the Lord. Yes, sir. So if you don't have a relationship with God, you cannot possibly identify with how someone who can go through the same trauma that you've gone through and come out mm -hmm. with, with a mind of peace. Mm -hmm. And it happens all the time. Yes, sir. And especially when people, when you're talking with them, they think that their problem is unique <laughs> and they're the only ones, but there is nothing new under the sun. Under the sun. Exactly. You know, so, uh, and, and, and uh, I mean, because of your feel, and just like me, don't forget, when I'm preaching, <laughs> people think I'm preaching on them, and, and I have I no clue. Huh? I was just thinking about that. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm sure you've had enough people come to you and say, well, I, I said something personal that dealt with their situation, or people that felt like you discussed something with me. Oh, yes, sir. And uh, just so that people will understand this, <laughs> How often do you get a chance to talk with me during the course of a week? In a week? Yeah. Oh, no, not not very likely. A no. month. <laughs> maybe, maybe about once a month yeah. to actually talk, but, talk? Yeah. Yes, sir. And that's, well, not about anyone. Yeah. And, that's <laughs> and that's brief. Yes, sir, very so brief. So no one could say, oh, yeah, I'd sit down with you and, right. and you discuss every single person that comes in to talk right. with you. And that's not the case. Right. You know, right. and I, I even tell them. I tell them when they come in for any kind of counseling or anything that this is confidential. I tell them the reasons that I would have to disclose anything, which is basically you ending your life or someone else's or something to that degree. Absolutely. I'm mandated for that, of course. Yes. But um, I, I make them aware that this is not a show and tell, where I'm going to talk to them and then call and talk to you, or I don't have a reason to do that. Mm -hmm. But if it's something, of course, that's detrimental to someone that's here or you know something like that that's a whole different conversation so absolutely yeah yeah so now that you've been you've been here for how long at joy center um since 2011. wow mm -hmm. you're going on what 15 13, years 13 14, wow somewhere around there <laughs> so you and your husband you got here what 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 position were you in? You were a GS what? I was a GS nothing at that time. Get I out of here. Not working. <laughs> you, you, weren't, you weren't working at no, all? Sir. I didn't start working until I'd been here a, a year and some change, I think. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And then I was a GS4. And you started off a GS4. What do you can uh, attribute to your growth and success in, in, in that? Mm -hmm. I mean, a number of things. I think hearing and being obedient to God, what God is telling us to do, um, mm. following the lead of my husband, who is, you know, truly the head of our household. Good I mean, point. We, that, that, has to, that has to be in place. Um, and, you know, he pushes as well as, you know, God urging and encouraging. But I think that if I weren't like here hearing the word mm -hmm. and understanding what that submission means, you know, that I wouldn't have progressed. I don't think I would have even seen that that was a possibility, to be honest. You probably wouldn't be married, or the marriage would be extremely dysfunctional. Oh, no, it, it definitely would have had its share of dysfunction, and we probably <laughs> would have just dealt with it versus really yeah. having the, the depth of relationship that we have. Like, I, I really love that dude. Well, uh, yeah. that's I, a good and, and thing. And I like him, too. Yeah, and you like him, too. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. That's a good thing. <laughs> what, what are some of the things you, you, you have? It, you got questions there. Anything you want to just talk about uh, that the audience may definitely be blessed by. Yes, sir. I was actually having a conversation with somebody at work today, and um, we were talking about um, suicide rates, because suicide rates are, they're 
exponentially higher than anybody even knows, and that's civilian and military. Yeah. Um, you know, I can't, of course, go into details about military stats because some Understand. of those things aren't even known. Wow. Um, but, you know, even in the Christian sector, there are so many different perspectives on suicide, mm -hmm. dealing with it or how to, like, approach it from a Christian perspective. And I was just curious if you would share some of your perspective on that. Like in what way uh, um, in terms of... Uh, even whether or not, whether it's okay or not, if it's um, something, if it's, if, it's a, if it's a selfish thing or not, um, you know, if, if it's something that can, that we're not doing enough to prevent it. There mm -hmm. just, there's so much conversation about that particular topic. And I honestly think that as providers, it makes it hard for us to even kind of address it or to kind of deal with it. Because yeah, from a biblical perspective, yes, because sir. of how you have to deal with the survivors. Mm -hmm. uh, and same with me, but still, the truth remains, Jesus said, or Paul said, if this is the body, the temple of, of the living God, and if we destroy this body, the Lord will destroy us. So we know that. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I don't think that we should uh, assume uh, and be sympathetic in the spiritual when God said certain things. It's just God. God is sovereign. Mm -hmm. And so he created us. Uh, if an individual, by way of losing their sense of, you know, mental awareness. And I believe that somehow they've done something because of that. That would be between God and them. I, I, cause I, I would not know personal, personally about any act that they've done before they even got to that point. Mm -hmm. You know, how engaged were they in sin? How, you know, cause some of them, uh, it doesn't hit till later. You, they can grow up normally. Uh, I, I have a friend that grew up just, uh, we grew up together. He was my best friend. But uh, someone slipped him a Mickey, which, you know, put something in his drink. Yes, sir. And from that day forward, he was not the same. His parents, were, uh, his mother was a believer. Uh, in fact, she was responsible for me going to church and how I got into the church. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, my friend that ended up uh, uh, taking, uh, drinking this uh, drink and then something was in it, somebody put something in it. He's literally running down the street in Chicago in 1975. So that tells you, how old were you about that time? Don't even tell me. <laughs> <laughs> well, but 1975, he's running down the street in this cold snow. He's butt naked. And in his mind, he's running after some actress and dancer, Lola mm -hmm. Falana. Mm -hmm. So if a person like that, uh, say, went off and didn't know what they were doing, then I think that's, that, that, of course, is between God and them. I, I don't sit back and say, oh, yeah, every single suicide is a self-inflicted based on their own knowledge and consciousness. Mm -hmm. Some people, I've said it before, you're trying to end it all when you're going to face it all. And so to kill yourself or even to harm yourself to any degree, cutting of, the, of yourself, uh, and you see that in the Bible. Mm -hmm. I remember I brought that out some years ago, the mm -hmm. first time, and people were saying, I never knew that. I said, this is nothing new. Nothing right. is new under the sun. Right. Uh, from homosexuality to, um, I mean, transgender maybe, but uh, because nobody <laughs> did surgery uh, uh, as progressive as they are now versus then. But people need to know that during the time, even when Jesus was on the face of the planet, remember in Noah's day, homosexuality was pretty pervasive yes. during that time as well. Uh, you see it during Abraham, Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. So it's not like it's something new. It's just that it's, it's coming out because of the, the evolving of that particular mindset where they're really trying to alter the body. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and of course, we got people that went through that whole process of 
becoming, going through the transgender medical uh, process, but got saved mm -hmm. and they know they can't go back and reverse that physically. Doesn't work that way in the natural, but their heart can go back to being who they were originally. Yes, sir. And the media will never ever bring that out, nor will the uh, uh, Christian or some Christian organizations bring it out. Right. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, certain things have been around for years and years and years. And people don't know Rome, uh, they were some of the most nastiest people. Mm -hmm. I mean, they had sex out in the open, uh, you know, uh, and uh, Judaism, not Judaism itself, but Jews rather, uh, they were under the control of the Roman Empire. So they saw things all the time. Mm -hmm. So we think pornography or, you know, stuff all of a sudden came up. No, people have been dealing with things that becomes a mental challenge because I believe that once it passes the, uh, the, the, the spiritual aspect of it and you no longer have a shield there, it becomes more mental than anything and you become trapped as a result of it. And, uh, and so but going back to the suicide, yeah, it's some people, let's just say you're out there uh, in war, you got shot, you're wounded, uh, and you want your guys to get away, so you stand and take the bullet. That would be considered some form of suicide, but I don't think that that would fall under the same scenario. So it's it's difficult, not difficult. I, I'll stick with the word only. Mm -hmm. If you destroy the body, you're gonna have to deal with God. If you're consciously aware of it, yeah, mm -hmm. you just you're just gonna have to deal with God. Mm -hmm. But surviving families, I would never discuss that part with them. I would say that's between them and God, and God is, you know. And I've had it because I've done funerals, and the p people have asked me, is my brother going to hell because he killed himself? And I would say that's not for me to actually say. I don't know the whole scenario, you know, surrounding that. And, but, and I, but I also pointed back to them, you're still here. You're here for a reason. Make sure that you honor God and then honor whoever your children and your children's children might be as a result of that. Mm -hmm. You know, don't, you know, rest on now what your brother or sister or even parents may have done, mm -hmm. you know. Yes, sir. Well, I'm glad to know I would handle that the way my spiritual father would. <laughs> so I've done well. <laughs> You've done well, absolutely, done well. absolutely. <laughs> Praise God for that. <laughs> so we um, we've noticed that the um, it seems like with anxiety, depression, suicide, those are kind of the big trio. Like um, like anxiety disorders, especially, is that's one of the the biggest behavioral health issues that we have right now, wow. period. Is and it considered number one? It is, it is the number one behavioral health issue. Worry. Worry, yes sir, <laughs> yes sir. <laughs> um, and that's diagnosed and undiagnosed because mm -hmm. most people won't address anything for you know their different varying reasons. Mm -hmm. um, but it seems as though the population for those kinds of concerns is, is getting younger and younger and younger. And th it seems that the level of resilience is um, gone. So wow. you know, we don't know if, if, if the resilience is lower because, you know, children are coddled too much or if the coddling comes because we realize the children aren't very resilient. I'm not sure which comes first. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my. Uh, I don't know. I, uh, not I don't know. But, uh, again, I can go back to... People have been bullied as children way before you and I came along. You know, mm -hmm. I just don't think that certain things are any different. I just think that we're becoming more aware and things are being addressed. They didn't address things years ago. And then we don't have any real records of what happened in times of antiquity. But we do know 
you know, children had to deal with certain things back then, just as we're doing them today, uh, from hunger to being bullied among kids, uh, it, it, and it goes on and on and on. Mm -hmm. I think because we're more, we're documenting more than any other time in history what's being done and how it's being done. And then as man, we're trying to figure out, of course, and then giving names to everything. Uh, I remember when you say disorder, I think, uh, I mean, not disorder, but anxiety disorder. <coughs> I think you also uh, agree with, uh, as a result of that, depression heavily weighs on people because you're constantly, <coughs> excuse me, concerned about something that your mind is starting to formulate that's not even in existence yet. Mm -hmm. uh, you're worrying about something before you even get any information about it. And this, that's, I think that's the saddest thing. Now, one time, uh, I was considered not where I went to a doctor and sat down and spoke with him, but I've been to two uh, when I was in the military. You know my story yes, sir. because my, my, my conversion was so drastic, uh, turning from this thug to a believer mm -hmm. that they, ha they thought that some, oh, I'm trying to do something. I'm trying to get out the military or whatever the case may be. So they sent me to two psychiatrists. And, and they only came up with one uh, uh, truth, that I was just one who had a serious conversion. Right. That's all it was. That's all they could come up with. Mm -hmm. uh, because I wasn't violent. I wasn't, you know. Mm -hmm. but, I, uh, but I do know, uh, based on what you're saying, uh, at one time after my divorce, uh, I remember talking with my pastor, my former pastor at, at the time, mm -hmm. one time, and uh, we're talking and he's going through some situations. His father had just died. He never got to know his dad. And we're in Landry's just crying and laughing and cracking up at the same time. And uh, when he said that, because he went to a psychiatrist just to sort of help him navigate, uh, now I didn't point the finger at him and I didn't say, hey, well, what about God or anything like that? That's between he and the Lord. Mm -hmm. And when you, whenever you involve someone else, you're bringing them into that, 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 that scenario. But he was sharing with me, he said, well, he was uh, diagnosed as functionally depressed. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what? That sounds just like my situation. Mm -hmm. And I knew I can function, I can go through everything, I can go through the norm, right. but I, there was a, not a major, but there was a degree of depression. Uh, uh, sister, I would be up early on Sunday morning, which is not my norm, uh, Sunday morning, and I'm running, I, I just felt n like nothing to do, uh, income was down, mm -hmm. I mean, things were bad, but you know why? Because of all the choices that I had made previously. I understood that. Now, versus someone else who wants to find another reason why, that's why their situation becomes, it's, it just perpetuates mm -hmm. because they won't accept that they could be the corporate. And if you are the corporate, you can also change it. Mm -hmm. I believe that God gave you the ability to make the mess and also t to clean it up. Right. You know? Yes, sir. Now, I don't know how do you deal with that when, when someone doesn't want to face that their decision making uh, and what they're doing and their perception, which can be changed, mm -hmm. is all based on them. How do you deal with that? Well, there's um, something called motivational interviewing mm -hmm. that someone came up with. Motivational interviewing. Yes, sir. Okay. And essentially what that is is um, you're helping that person get f out of their ambivalence. So, you know, if someone states... You sound so intelligent. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> um, so, you know, basically what, again, um, a lot of people think a therapist is like the answer or the advice. 
that's that's not what we do. Exactly. We're helping you come to your own conclusions because we already have all of the answers that we need. Mm -hmm. We're just it's just clouded by the stuff. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so with the motivational interview and the person's talking to me and I'm essentially repeating back to them what they're saying yes. to a degree. Yes. Not not word for word, but I may, you know, kind of summarize or whatever, but they're hearing what they're saying. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times as they're talking, what they're saying begins to change. And sometimes they don't come back because they don't like <laughs> their own response <laughs> but but essentially what they're realizing is is that that i might have something to do with this you uh -huh. know? yeah and so it, it just helps to get them to a point where they're even able to embrace that there might be a change mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. um sometimes i you know may ask like scale of one to ten how bad is this you know it's an eight what could make it a six? Well, if they didn't so and so, but what can you do to make it a six? So Absolutely, it's just like inside out. It's yeah. just bringing them back within themselves because mm -hmm. nothing is everyone else's fault. Absolutely, nothing Very in our true. lives is everyone else's fault. Very true. Because I can't undo anything that was done in the past, but it's my responsibility for my for my present and my future. So even if something was done, I can focus on that, or I can keep the seeds that the enemy has sown from that from growing because yeah. I might not be able to change the rape per se, but I right. can change the bitterness and the mistrust and the anger and the things that came from it and mm -hmm. keep them from growing because that's mm -hmm. what's going to cause me issues. Yeah. Not the situation. You said something which is so key in terms of, I, it's almost like you're saying to a degree, I'm helping to helping you to manage the seed to ensure that it doesn't grow because yes, it's in us. Mm -hmm. And I've said it, I mean, tons of, of times. Mm -hmm. You have to, Paul said, there dwell it within me. See, I'm, I bring in scripture yes, every time. There dwell it within us, our flesh, no good thing. Within us are seeds because we were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. Mm -hmm. Within us are seeds of homosexuality, fear, anxiety, all of those things that deals with us, yes, us, and us is based on our perception, which is based on our mental capacity, which is also based on our experiences. Mm -hmm. And those experiences gives us a formulated process of how we see ourselves and everything around us. Right. It's, oh, I'm sorry. I'm taking your job. No, sir. Go no, ahead. No, no. <laughs> but uh, 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 the Bible speaks of these things. And this is where my field is different than yours uh, to a degree. Mm -hmm. I, I can go into yours and you can come into mine. But I have to stay on the basis of at least a good 70 to 80 percent. I did still deal with the mind. But I want to get to the foundation mm -hmm. of every single act because there is a foundation there is a and if we can deal with the root of a thing mm -hmm. because the, the 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 it's never in the fruit itself it's in the root mm -hmm. the fruit just you know it's just gonna <laughs> keep coming but the root if we can get the, and the bible talks about the root of bitterness but there there's roots to everything roots of anxiety roots mm -hmm. to fear you know, where is it coming from? Mm -hmm. Why is it there? How come I'm afraid of the dark, you know? And I've said before, we tell our children to not be afraid of the dark, but who can tell those parents not to be afraid of the light? Yes, sir. Right. You see, they need to know that the truth is what prevails more than anything. And the only way I could, I'm, now I'm not one of those people that like to avoid certain things. I'll never make it through, I can never make it through life. It'll never change my financial situation. It'll never, you know, my I gotta deal with it. I have to confront it. Mm -hmm. And if I can't make someone else confront it, uh, even if in a marriage, I can't make my wife confront something but I would rather deal with it. But I'm not one of those people that are afraid to sit back and not talk about it mm -hmm. and to see myself. That is where you have to lose the fear of seeing yourself. How did you deal with stuff personally? 
because uh, you weren't always where you are, of course, like I wasn't always where I am. How did you deal with certain things to become better at being a child of God first, then a human being, and not looking at everyone through the lens of your personal experience? This is way before you got to where you are now. Yes, sir. But how did you deal with issues? I'm sure you had to have some anxiety issues at one time oh, and yes, problems and uh, and uh, marital issues that, uh, you know, or ways that you've seen yourself, your husband, your children, mm -hmm. your job. Did you ever have to deal with low self-esteem? Talk about that Cause so yeah. people can know, hey, just because you're talking doesn't mean you haven't been through certain things. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. There's been a few times where... Um, um, Holy Spirit will kind of lead me to share, you know, little tidbits of my story here and there. And people are always like, I can't believe it. You're a therapist. You should know how to, you know. And I was like, first of all, we don't therapize ourselves. <laughs> but, uh, but I think that um, I think that coming into the understanding that everything I dealt with equipped me yes. for, for this because I um, I had extremely low self esteem for a number of reasons growing mm -hmm. up. Um, you know, I. From, from the standpoint of there, there were parts of my childhood that were great, and then there were other parts that were horrible. You right, know? And, right. And some of those things I don't discuss unless the Lord says so, because it's right. just there's no wisdom in that. So exactly. Um, but I think that um, as I was going through these things, whenever he, whenever certain things would come up, I had to get beyond pushing them away, mm -hmm. and I had to really get to a point of just exposing and putting them out there not being concerned with the shame or the guilt, you know, I mean, God already knows, but it was in growing my relationship with God that I was even able to address those things. And it was a process. It was a process over Absolutely. the years. Sometimes I don't realize something's in there until I'm talking to somebody. Very and then true. it's like, where yeah. that come from? Exactly. So, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's why we have the tissue here. <laughs> right. Like, when I was nine. <laughs> And if I think about it too long, I might cry. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but but those things come up. But, um, I mean, like, even even now with, with knowing what I know And that's now, not wrong, just so that people know that. It's not wrong. And you, I don't know if you recall the book, one of the books I said I'm writing, and it's called Therapeutic Fellowship. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, confess your faults one to another that you might be healed. Mm -hmm. And that deals with both. The outside and the inside being here, but I'm sorry, but go ahead. <laughs> so it, it's it's interesting you say that because I had to get past that 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 shame of um, stuff, mm -hmm. you know, because some things were done to me and I had no mm -hmm. control over them. Some things I freely chose to do and, and I knew mm -hmm. that they mm -hmm. were wrong or did what I'd always seen. Yeah, and. Um, there comes a point where people look at you a certain way. They think that, you know, I don't know, you've got it all together. Or you never feel anxious or you never had a past or whatever. I'm like, no, my past qualified me for this. Amen. I don't, if I would have. I like I, that girl. Come on. Come on now. There you <laughs> if go. If I would have done this 20 years ago, I, I wouldn't have been very effective for anyone. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, to be completely honest, I wouldn't have been. Um, he's been like growing this thing in me for years, you mm -hmm. know. And um, so the things that I went through in my experiences helped me relate to other people. It's mm -hmm. nothing for me to be, I'm not, I'm not proud of it, right, but right. I'm not ashamed yes, of it either. Exactly. Because it helps me help other people. And at the end of the day, it's not about, it's not about me. Yeah, you know, yeah. I was telling somebody the other day that, you know, my, my assignment is here and my assignment is attached to you. Mm -hmm. And so regardless of any other relationships, friendships, or anything else in this place, I had to get to a point where I accepted and said yes to my assignment, no matter what it looks like, because this is where he's brought me and this is what I do. And until my yes is a full yes, I'm not going to be able to be fully functional and you know, right. able to do what I need to in the kingdom. So You're right. And I hope everyone just heard what she said, because that is extremely powerful. And every person needs to understand that you can't have a partial yes and want a full result. It yes, doesn't sir. work that way. Not at all. Uh, but, but I can tell you, it's made you a much better daughter Thank and you. member of this church because you understand ministry. It's, and, and if there's anything, 
I got to have some weights taken off me. Yes. I need some people that, and I don't want to say need, uh, but I, my, I would like the way God wants this thing to be organized, to be functioning that way where we are all a part like the hand. Every part of the hand, the body, has a, a specific purpose and function. Mm -hmm. So I can't be the only one. So I have no problem in saying, don't talk to me. Go see her, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and uh, go to Inside Out. And because I, I, you don't know how much I love and honor what God is doing with you and your husband. Mm -hmm. Because even though your husband doesn't have a degree in that area, that's not where he's working. And a degree to me doesn't do anything. It's right. just a piece of paper on the wall. Right. What you're doing and what you're getting from the Lord makes what you do so much better. And that, may, that means that God can give you ways of going into the spirit realm and, and the physical and then combining those two together to make someone understand from a whole different perspective that they never thought was possible. Yes, I would love to see your book once you get that stuff together. Work on it, sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that classes and everything else, yeah. right? Yeah. But uh, someone asked me once, how do you do everything you do? You, you, you do business, you do pastoring, you do this, you do that. And I said, I don't, I'm not one of those people that take one head off and then put on another one. Mm -hmm. I said, now that's been the overall concept, you know, change the hats. Mm -hmm. Uh, talk to, uh, I'm going to be the counselor today, right. so I'm going to take this hat <laughs> off, take my pastor's hat off and put on the, you know, I don't do that. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's like uh, the wife will say, I, wa I want to talk to my husband, not to my pastor. Mm -hmm. So I have to take my, pa my, my <laughs> pastor's hat off and talk. No, it's mm -hmm. all one. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the same person no matter what your condition or what your the seriousness mm -hmm. of your issue is. So he doesn't cease to be your brother. Right. God doesn't cease to be your father. It's just that we are who we are, like Paul said, by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. So I don't categorize or compartmentalize those functions. Mm -hmm. It's under one spirit, just like the Bible tells us. And that's how I do it. It gives me a peace of mind, too, because yes, it makes me not see myself in those different categories. Mm -hmm. I'm just dad. If and it's it all depends on the individual. Yes, sir. How that individual perceived me. And I can pick up on it. I, I you know, mm -hmm. uh, I know one of the strongest gifts that I have is the discerning of spirits. Mm -hmm. Not the spirit of discernment, but the discerning of spirits. And I can somewhat pick up uh, person, still, I've been doing this for so long, and, and then when you come off the streets, and I've been from from uh, downtown to uptown. I personality wise, Yolanda, everybody's the same. Whether you have a billion dollars or you have just a, a dollar in the bank, mm -hmm. every every person is the same, and every person has a general concept about life. Me, myself, and I. Mm -hmm. That's that's going to be the issue until they get saved, even if they say they're born again, until it becomes them, those, and and not us, but him, then it changes the yes, perspective sir. because everything you're doing now is for someone else. God rewards you for that, not because of what you're doing for yourself. Yes, sir. So I don't compartmentalize that way. I just give in to God. Whatever you see me as, just like God, he's Jehovah Jireh, you need this. Mm -hmm. You know, you ever see the movie uh, uh, The Shack? Oh, yes, sir. That is one of my favorite movies. Mine too. Is it? Yes, sir. We're going to show that movie soon. We're going to put it on the, the, the 4K screen. And, oh, man, see yes, it sir. beautifully in church. I think this generation coming up, the younger generation Z, mm -hmm. which I would love to get your views on that, on that one too, because <laughs> you're dealing with a lot of them in the military. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would like to show them that, that video, I mean, that movie. Mm -hmm. 
uh, everything isn't biblically correct. It's just, it's Hollywood as well. Right. But some of the points are very great points. Mm -hmm. But uh, dealing with Generation Z, which I have a heart for, and I think the generation after them, uh, is, uh, they're having children, they're like, what, Alpha generation or whatever? Um, I, I, you I don't, don't know. know the names of many. Okay, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's doing it. But mm -hmm. dealing with that Generation Z, those that are 18, 20, uh, how have their mentalities changed, say, from your age group? What What is so vastly different, or is there a vast difference? There is a vast difference. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. What's the vast Now, is it based on economics, or we're talking based on perception and how they see life? Perception and how they see life. Okay. Mm -hmm. Talk to me. Because um, I think that, and I'm sure that the generation before us will probably say that we're oh, not very resilient and it. we didn't do very well either. <laughs> but, um, but the biggest thing is just... There, there's just a lack of a resilience. And um, I think, I was thinking about it today, and um, I think that because it's such a microwave society, you know, you can go online and you can look this up and, you know, I can do this and I can get things done so quickly, mm -hmm. that there is no, like, waiting on God to do things. There's no, there's no sense of wait, like, this is right here, I can take care of this right now, versus let me wait on a God that I don't necessarily see or I don't see his actions right away. Right. So, you know, the fact that they want everything so quickly and everything to be the way that they want it, mm -hmm. and then if it's not, the, the results are drastic. Like, it's not like, well, let me just go try something else. It's like, well, I don't, I, I need to unalive myself. That's the new term that I despise. Wait, say that? Unalive. Un unalive. Unalive. As in, take your own life. I will go unalive myself. That's what they're saying. Yes, sir. Go yes, ahead. Yes, sir. My, my, I, my heart I, goes out. I, go I hate it. I hate it. I hate it so much. But it's extremes, you know, for simple things because for whatever reason, they feel like I'm the only one. It's a very selfish society. I mean, mm. generation. Very, very selfish. It's about me. You don't give me what I want. I will take me out of the picture. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessary. Um, I would probably say 70% of the people that come and see me, mm -hmm. if I were to put all of the issues side by side, they would all look just alike because the enemy doesn't have anything new. But right. I don't think that anybody realizes that he's using the same stuff. Mm -hmm. But he, mm -hmm. it, it may be packaged a little differently, but because no one wants to, everyone's prideful doesn't want to speak up about anything that may be going on unless you're giving advice to someone else that you should be hearing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so the, that pridefulness and wanting things like right away, um, it's minimizing you allowing God to show up in your life and do what he can and will do if you mm -hmm. allow him to. Mm -hmm. So it's just, I don't even know if it's so much a lack of resilience as it is, I want it now. And if I can't get it now, then I'll take a drastic measure to get it. Wow. And you won't get it that way. Not at all. You won't be allowed to get it. I've even asked people before, um, can't use examples, but someone had a decision to make. And if I don't get this decision, then I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave here and kill myself today. And I'm like, so this situation is short term, mm -hmm. but this decision is long term. Help me understand. Help, help me make sense of this. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't explain it. Thank God they're still here. So apparently there was yeah. a seed that was sown or one that was watered that, you know, yeah. kept that from becoming a reality. But do you see it at all that they're crying out for help and say, say, give me a way to rationally look at this, see this? I think that, that there are some. You know, now they're based on environments. I would say that the military is different than uh to a large degree, the civilian life mm -hmm. is different because there are, in the military, you have a sense of order over you, right? Mm -hmm. But also a sense of reward. And so it's not like that in civilian with, say, a kid the same age. Mm -hmm. uh, in the military, they know that it's like they can emphasize certain things knowing you won't look at it the way if they were out there at home. Mama may say, well, 
do what you have to do. All right. You know, right. nobody's there to do that. So in the military, it's different because you all are under such restraints that you got to see third, certain things a certain way. Mm -hmm. That military environment, which, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> I was in the military for six years for those that are watching. I, I believe that because we want to have a, a parental guidance for uh, Christian military people, mm -hmm. because I believe that there are, because we were in the military, right? Yes, sir. And we were believers. Yes, sir. What, what and then I was young, just like that. Okay, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, I, I was <laughs> in my age group when I was like eighteen or uh, eight, yeah, eighteen, nineteen, especially eighteen. I got saved at eighteen, but from no, those that point on, from eighteen, uh, that time frame, of course, I was jacked up. My mindset was not, I, I didn't fear the consequences mm -hmm. because of my former environment. So I was willing to fight you. I was willing to get you out in the field mm -hmm. and we go at it. You know, I didn't get what I wanted. Uh, you know, I used a race card. You know, <laughs> it wasn't as many, say, African-American or black leaders in the military during that time. Do you have to leave? No, sir. Okay. <laughs> That's your <laughs> alarm clock saying, hey, it's almost that time. Someone no. was calling me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, every scenario, it's not one size fits all. Mm -hmm. True. And it's, so it's not the same way. Put that joker out in civilian life and watch how they react differently. Oh, yes. That environment is it's going to cause them to see it a lot bit yes. a lot differently. Mm -hmm. What is the military doing uh, uh, that you can say, and if you can, I understand mm -hmm. that could somewhat, I mean, confront the issue straight on because mm -hmm. some of these kids just need a, 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 a swift kick in the butt. Very true. You know. True. And, and you uh, mean from a BH, from a behavioral health perspective? Yes. So. What are they, uh, do, how, how tied, are, I know your hands are drastically tied, mm -hmm. but go ahead. So we, um, in behavioral health, we, you know, we have like different like, you know, um, trainings and stuff that we do, but a lot of times those aren't necessarily taken very seriously because it's like, okay, whatever. Um, but the issue that we're having is that your leaders are generally more old school, you know, old school leaders that don't necessarily see behavioral health the way it should be seen. Right. Um, and the younger generation is, you know, um, you know, have they have a PhD in, you know, internet, so <laughs> they know the things to say to, you know, to look a certain way and to try right, to get certain right, percentages. Right. And that's not everyone, you know, yeah, but yeah. but that's a big part of what we see. So when it comes to what we do. Um, it's it is difficult because there are other constraints that have been put on us from what people think that they know versus you know what things really are. Mm -hmm. So we try our best to like do groups, and when they come to us individually, um, if it's not truly a behavioral health issue and it's a behavior issue, then we address that and we direct it back to the command. Okay, like, tell me the difference of the two. So a behavioral health issue is something that's like impacting your like thought process and it's causing you to not be able to function socially, you know, personally, um, you know, at your job. Mm -hmm. A behavior issue is I'm coming in today and I'm anxious because I don't want to go to formation. You know, <laughs> tomorrow I'm going to be depressed because I don't want to do PT. You know, that's a little different. So. <laughs> Did y'all get that? Great. <laughs> so I don't want to go to church tomorrow, right, okay? Right. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I got a headache. <laughs> no, no, go ahead. But, um, but that's the biggest thing. Is, uh, we have to educate the leadership as much as we educate the person that's coming in. So we do a lot of um, psycho, well, psycho education, mm -hmm, you know, really mm -hmm. looking into what it is that's going on and, and letting them know that um, just by virtue of coming to see us is not going to get you a percentage. Um, but also just by virtue of coming to see us, it's not going to get you kicked out. So we're like right. fighting it from both extremes. Wow. You know, but we're, we, we, we do the best that we can right. to educate the leadership, educate the individual. And we also have support one another. Like we do case um, studies, you know, mm -hmm, within mm -hmm. amongst ourselves and, you know, kind of bounce things back and forth. So it's, it's a, 
it's a it's a fine line to balance. Yeah, you know, yeah. but it's it, it gets really difficult because it's hard sometimes without the Lord <laughs> to discern the ones mm -hmm. that that really need to come versus the other ones. Some yeah. of them really are a cry for help and. Those are the ones when you come, we are we are there and we're ready to do what needs to be mm -hmm, done. Mm -hmm. You know, we're we're gonna walk with you, sit with you. That we may not Praise have God. an answer for you. Right. Sometimes right. it's just letting you know that you are not by yourself. Right. You're not the only one to experience it. We get it. We're we're here with you. Sometimes that's that's really what's needed. Yeah. And that, that helps them know that they can move on. And I love that because sometimes uh you want to know, is someone going to walk with you? And it reminds me of the uh, the painting of Jesus walking across the sand, carrying a person, but but you can't see. You think it's you walking across the sand mm -hmm. and seeing the footsteps and only realize Jesus carried you through those scenarios. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. And that is exactly how it is. Uh, and, and I think with those stories, because uh, I'm a person of stories. That's what your Bible is about. It's a book of stories, mm -hmm. incredible stories of overcoming. And one of the most uh, powerful verses in the Bible are the, are the ones that are ignored. According to your faith, mm -hmm. be it unto you. It is the same according to how you believe, be it unto you. According to how you think, be it unto you. But they don't see, they, you're not allowed to bring that out like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and that would be, because some of those kids, of course, uh, come from a Christian background. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the things, in, and, and this is what I have, I mean, for years, and I'm talking about all the way to the 70s, whenever we've had someone, especially in the military, that uh, had some uh, mental issues. Uh, the pastor or myself, a preacher, was never allowed to go up there. And it was under the, the guise of, uh, well, a lot of the issues are God and God this, and so we don't want you to somehow, you know, uh, perpetuate or uh, deepen whatever emotions they're, they are experiencing. Mm -hmm. And so they wouldn't let us go up there. Uh, but, and I'm not gonna say every pastor is is fully aware of how to deal with that issue. Mm -hmm. I know how to deal with the, the physical without them even knowing I'm touching the spiritual. Mm -hmm. I know how to do that. Yes, That's based on the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and allowing the Holy Spirit to help me in terms of doing that. Yes, sir. You see it in the Bible, the man is a maniac, he's a lunatic, and he runs up to Jesus. People read the story but don't realize the only reason he ran up to Jesus, it wasn't the devil. It was enough in him to recognize that Jesus was there. And he drove those spirits with him because he had to see Jesus. Then a demonic spirit spoke out of him. Mm -hmm. But it was that man that was reaching out. And that, of course, they couldn't touch him. Of course, Jesus or the man couldn't touch him. But the reality is, at the end, the Bible says something because Jesus dealt with two perspectives. One was the spirit and the other one was the mind. And at the end, he was clothed and in his right, right mind. mind. Mm -hmm. So people don't realize that's part of what we do too. You're dealing with the, the mind because that is the focal point where all of your decisions are being made. And if you have the wrong perspective up here, and I'm saying regarding anything and everything because people don't realize it is. Mm -hmm. Monetary issues, marital issues. It's how you see things. Everything is not a demon, you know, but it can be demonically influenced, mm -hmm. uh, but it's not a demon per se. So it's knowing how to recognize that because just like you, we all have to, if we're spirit led, have to deal with the influence or the root to every issue mm -hmm. or that person will never get delivered. Yes, That's the reason why people's lives are changing because I'm preaching. I know what I'm doing. 
I don't I may not know where it is going, how that word is going out everywhere, but I know what I'm doing. I know what the Lord has, is telling me to say. Sometimes he interrupts. Sometimes he gives it to me a week in advance. Sometimes it's the night before. Sometimes it's a name. I called one time. I was in a, a, a place where I called a person's name and the person wasn't there. I said, you've been dealing with something and that's insight. That's the spirit of knowledge, the word of knowledge. And uh, I said, you, you're dealing, this person is dealing with something. I said, if you know this person, I, I don't want to mention the name. They said, well, the person is here, but they're not out here. They're in dealing with the children. Sure enough, came out. Only the mother knew. Mm. And then, of course, as she opened up, most of the people around her understood as well. Mm -hmm. And But God changed that girl's life. I mean, forever changed her life. And that's just one story. Mm -hmm. But I'm a recipient of that, how God delivered me. Mm -hmm. And so when we're seeing that, Yolanda, it, it's major. And I, I believe that Monday night prayer that we have is a time not just to get, uh, you know, your next blessing, but to hear God and what he has to say to you mm -hmm. and to fight through in the spirit, whatever you have to fight through and deal with things. Yes, so, you know, uh, yes, before we, we got to get ready to close this baby out, mm -hmm. but you have any, uh, any questions for me again, any others that uh, dealing with anything, uh, talking about how the church may have been influential in your life, your husband's life, and how other people, you give us some testimonies of people that come to you and say, hey, uh, I got offended because of what Bishop said, but, it got, but I got free at the same time, or, you know, oh, yeah. anything, you know. I, 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 hear, I, hear a lot of, I hear a lot of that, actually. Um, <laughs> you know, just, just um, you know, people being offended by different things, but, you know, recognizing that it's that word that comes forth. I know, I think Sunday or maybe yesterday, I don't know, my days get mixed <laughs> together. Um, you were mentioning something about the importance of the words and not realizing sometimes that the words we heard way back when, you know, can sow or grow a seed, you know, that, that still causes issues for people. And I think that um, one of the things that people dismiss a lot of times is, you know, those words that come mm, forth, mm. they are they are life. You that's know? exactly right. And if right. you don't want to accept them, that's 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 a struggle, you know, within that's whatever's going exactly on within yourself. Correct. But um but it's those words that, that matter. And even a lot of times, like when someone comes and they says that something didn't sit right with them or they're offended by something, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I'll have them verbalize why, you know, this offended me because why? And we'll just kind of talk back and forth until they realize that, oh, that's something that's in me. It had nothing to do with Bishop <laughs> or you or, you know, but a lot of times if we can just recognize that, recognize what we've accepted in our thought process or what we've put out there in our own words, you know, we, re we we come to our own conclusions with yeah. that stuff and realize that, that it's us. Yeah. Um, but what he's done in Inside Out, it 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 really just it, it just blows my mind wow. what he does in Inside Out. I've seen people that have come and um, like their lives are completely transformed, and it's we're not doing any heebie-jeebies or right. anything. You know, yes, it's just yes. it's really just being in that presence and allowing Holy Spirit to do what He does and speak through us. You know, but some of the um, some of the breakthroughs that people have told me about and things that they've shaken off their lives and recognizing that I don't have to be anxious or I just needed to change my thoughts about this or, you know, this molestation doesn't have to keep me bound for the rest of my life. You know, um, it God really does want us free. And that yeah. was something that I think that I, at one point some years ago, I struggled with that thought process. Mm -hmm. Like, can we really be free? Mm -hmm. But his word says we can. So yeah. So we, we can. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of putting in the work and recognizing that his word is true. And if I don't see it right away, I, if I don't believe it, I'm wrong, not him. So you true. Know, it's, a, it's just true. a matter of, you know, believing and continuing to trust and continuing to say the right things. And we'll see that manifestation of those things. That's there's not a lot of glory in, in this <laughs> profession. I'll say that. But when we see those things like that and, and see the that's change. That's rewarding. That's the reward. Yep. Yes, sir. Yep. Yes, sir. Yep. 
I would say that uh, it, it, you know, my father, it just, it, it blesses my heart when I see the changes in people. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I don't have a personal touch. I do have the reach, but not the touch of every person. Mm -hmm. So I don't get to hear, nor do I want to hear, <laughs> you know, to be honest with you. <laughs> Uh, you know, just tell me you you you, you allow the word to really touch your heart and change you. Yes, sir. That's the most important thing to me because I know what we're going through. Yes, uh, sir. Every per person has some things that they have to fight through, and some things don't get exposed until you experience certain things. Mm -hmm. So, if uh, people can understand, life is a marathon, not a, a quick old sprint, and uh, there's a way to minister to every generation, every single generation. And that is, every person is basically the same. Mm -hmm. If you, you have an issue, they have an issue, they have an issue, all have issues. Yes, there may be different issues, but the answer is always the same. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the answer yes, for the world yes, today. Sir. Yes, sir. And uh, it starts with him. You know, yes. once you learn that uh, you got to surrender to God, turn it over to him, make him your Lord. Mm -hmm. And don't, don't make it a fight. Uh, and I'm going to close with this, Yolanda. I am a firm believer that the laborious side of always fighting internally for the change uh, makes it more difficult for people to adjust. And I, I'm careful of terms that I use. Uh, it's like, here's an illustration. You've, you've got Peter saying, I've taught, we've taught all night. That means I, we've labored, we did what we knew to do. It's not biting, it's discouraging, da 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 da. And Jesus says, I have a better way. Just mm -hmm. put your nets out on the other side. Mm -hmm. Let down your nets. That's not a part of where you have to work. Mm -hmm. You have to believe. Yes, so sir. I always come back to that. You have to just believe. Yes, sir. If you can get past this idea that you got to do all of these things to somehow justify and win this over, and you get a certificate or a plaque at the end, I'm telling you, that's not, it's not gonna happen that way. Mm -hmm. You can do well at, for one moment and you're not gonna do well the next, mm -hmm. but you just gotta know in your heart, you just believe and that's what faith is and that's what God demands of us because mm -hmm. the answer is in that, according to your faith, Yes, sir. Be it unto you. Yes, sir. Yolanda, thank you for coming. Thank my you for dear me. doctor. I love you, sir. And she <laughs> she talks to me, and that's my therapist. No, 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 not. But the Holy Spirit is my therapist, mm -hmm. uh, and he's there. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure he's yours. Yes, sir. He's our comforter. Yes, sir. But everybody's not there spiritually. So. I don't know how anybody does this work without God. I don't. You're right. I don't. I'm either. glad I don't have to. <laughs> yeah, and you don't need to look back at anything because you got him. Yes, sir. And you can look forward. Yes, sir. God bless you. We bless you. expect God to do some great things. Can you say a quick prayer for somebody that may be watching and going through something? Okay. Glory to God. Go. Father God, Lord, we just thank you, God. We know that you are here, Lord. And Father God, I just pray in the name of Jesus for the hearts and minds of your people, God. Lord, I just pray that they can just step outside of the things that they think that they see and feel, Father God, and recognize that you are the truth, God. Whether they step out and say something, Lord, whether they're seeking you in prayer, God, reading your word, I just pray that they hear what they need to hear, Father God, so that they can recognize that they truly can be made free, God. Yes. There is nothing that is greater than you, Lord, and we trust and believe in you for all things, Father God, because we know who you've created us to be, to be from the beginning. So, Lord, we just honor you. We thank you, Father God. We declare ourselves free even now, Father God, and it's in uh, Jesus' yes. name that we pray. Amen. So, Father, we honor you. Let this word touch every heart and may your glory resonate through this Internet and all the people receive something in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. So we are looking forward 
to doing this again. Yes, sir. God bless you. God bless you. We'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> oh.